Hello everyone. In this video, I will speak about how I got this 150K piano and how I get there actually. I didn't buy it uh, 50 years ago, so I'm 40 and uh, now I have this piano. I didn't always have this piano. So we'll explain how I got there and then I will tell you if I think it's worth the money and if the piano is really worth uh, the quality we, we say it has. So stay tuned, look until the end. So actually I'm having this piano now since two, uh, three, four years. Um, it's a Steinway Model C. So Steinway have basically four models, A, B, C, D, A being the smallest, D being the big concert uh, piano. That's the C, so it's the second biggest. Uh, it's 2 meter 27. I will write in inches on the screen how much it is. The great concert piano is 2 meter 70 something. Um, the A is 180, I think, and the B is 211. Um, now, to answer the question, how did I get 150k dollar or Swiss franc is more or less the same and the price in Switzerland is more or less 150,000. Might uh, be a bit different depending on the country, but for me it was this price. Now the, the answer is I didn't get it new, so it's not 150,000 anymore. It was only 70,000, which is more affordable, of course. And then the whole story is I didn't buy this piano when I was 10 or I didn't got it when I was 10. Um, actually very often have people telling me oh you're so lucky you have a Steinway or you're it's a rich stuff to have a Steinway when I will be rich I will have one well some people have a house of this price and I have a piano of this price so I don't have a house actually I don't own a house I'm renting an apartment and I'm not rich so I'm, I'm a piano teacher I'm doing fine but I'm not rich so how did I get there well when I was a kid um, a teenager 12 I started to play piano and when my parents saw I was a bit more serious, they bought me an electric piano, a Technics. I remember this piano very well, I was very happy with it, I played a lot on it, I improvised on it and everything. That's how I started piano. Now my father had a piano because he's playing piano and since my parents separated when I was four, I could only see the piano of my father every second week. Uh, it was every second weekend, sorry. And after a while, my father noticed I was really serious on uh, practicing piano. So he decided, very nice, to give me his piano. It was at that time a Günther. It's a Belgian-French brand, I think. Uh, well, this, one, this one was a Belgian one because it, it was Günther Brussels. Brussel. Um, was worth around 2000, I think. My mother bought it for my father. And I played on this piano. I was very happy I could play at my mother's place on this piano. It was a big update from my electric piano to a real uh, piano, but it was not a very high quality piano. It was fine. I was really happy with it. I didn't know better anyway. So, um, But then at my father's place, I had no piano to practice. So he noticed after a while he wanted to practice too. And he was he would be happy if I would be practicing when I come. So he decided to buy a Petrov. And he still has the piano. It's a very nice piano. Uh, 190, I think. Then uh, when I entered the conservatory when I was 18, uh, I still had the Günther. I moved to Brussels to study there and I needed a better piano because the Günther, as I said, was nice but was not a very high quality piano. And in the conservatory we had Yamaha's and Steinways and this kind of stuff. So, um, But then I decided to look for a piano and I found a guy in Brussels who renovated um, old Kawai and Yamaha piano, uh, the, the smaller one for studies. So I found there a very, very nice Kawai KG two from uh, 1975 something around for 7,000 euros at that time it must be equivalent to $7,000 I think and um, I sold the Gunther of my father for something like thousand and then I maybe my parents helped me a bit I don't remember but basically I paid the rest myself so I was working in the opera uh, opening doors and with the money I was earning I was paying my piano so that's the first step and then when I moved to France uh, some years later I actually sold my piano because I didn't want to move it that far and I bought the upright piano Yamaha new this time it was the first new piano I bought with a silent system it was also around 7,000 euros I had for some years and then again I decided I wanted to upgrade so I went to a piano shop and um, I remember my girlfriend telling me don't come back with a piano of 20,000 uh, francs because, uh, euros because we cannot afford and the guy was very convincing. There were a lot of pianos. And I remember I wanted to find a piano that is close to Steinway, but I could not afford Steinway. So uh, because sometimes I was doing concert and sometimes I had Steinway. So I wanted to get close to the Steinway. And I found actually a very nice Boston new. So Boston is the um, cheaper 
Steinway um, pianos. They are made in, if I'm right, in, actually in, in Japan by Kawai, but with the, the Steinway um, rules and patents. And I actually end up selling my upright piano to the guy and making a credit, so like a, a loan, to pay this piano of 25,000 francs, uh, euros at that time. My girlfriend was a bit first against, but then she understood, okay, I'm a pianist, I'm teaching, I'm giving lessons. Uh, and we, she was actually in the contract to, in case I would not be able to pay it, which was very nice. And I paid this piano uh, yeah, with my money. I didn't earn a lot at that time. Then I decided to move to, at first to Germany for a short time and then to Switzerland. And after a while, I decided to bring my piano from France that I left uh, staying at a friend's place. I decided to move it here to Boston. Um, and I finished paying the Boston here in Switzerland. I earned a bit more money. And then when I finished paying it, I thought about upgrading to Steinway. And a friend of mine was buying a Steinway and he said, you should come. Uh, the guy has uh, some other Steinways, second hand. And then I asked the seller here um, in Zurich and he told me, oh, we're, I just have a Steinway C of someone who is looking to sell it. Uh, and it was this piano. And apparently, actually, this piano is from 1974 or 75. So it's a quite old piano. But that's my point. If you are if you're lucky and you look for a piano and you can find one like this, this piano was actually owned by one person. So someone who bought it in Zurich uh, in the 75s and lived in a villa here a bit higher and didn't play a lot on it. I actually meet the girl, the one of the girls of the guy who was selling it. And so it was a very well maintained piano that didn't have a lot of uh, playing hours on it. And uh, I could buy it for 50%. So I did the same. I did again a loan. So I was still paying the piano every month and I would be done paying it in six years. So actually I would be done paying my Steinway in, uh, when I would be 46. And I started paying my pianos when I was 12. So, uh, no, not 12, sorry, 18. So, yeah, that's a long time investing in my piano, right? But since I'm a musician, that was my priority. My priority was not really ever to buy a house and or to buy a car or whatever you give or to invest. So, I mean, some people start to invest money when they are 18, right? They're saving money, they invest in stocks and then they get a lot of money. So, this was not my priority. You could do this, but I guess if you are rich, you can do it all. If you are not, you just choose one way. This was mine and actually I'm really happy I did it. So to answer the question now, is it worth it spending so much money in a piano? Um, yes and no, depends of course, um, what money do you have? If you don't have so much money, the answer is more no, actually, because if you compare the Kawaii of 7,000 I had and this piano of 70,000, um, the price is 10 times more, but the quality is not 10 times more. So the quality is maybe difficult to evaluate with, let's say, 20% more and you pay 20, 10 times more for this. But that's that's like, the, it's like this for most of stuff. I had this experience with speakers too. The last percent you want to improve cost more than the first one. So if you have the money, of course you do it because it's, uh, it's a nice way to improve. But if you don't, actually, you can be perfectly happy with a uh, Kawaii. That's actually a very, very good piano already. And then there is also like, who notices difference? Like, if you're not a professional, you will probably not really notice the difference. I'm sure we can do a blind test with a very good Kawaii, a very good Steinway, and non-professional pianist playing, and they would probably not notice which one is better. They will notice a difference, but they will not especially notice which one is better. So. Yeah, it depends on how much budget you have. If you have money, and even if you're an amateur and have a lot of money, of course you would spend it because it's a nice instrument, it's a nice brand also, it's a famous brand, you know that they build quality. Now, Kawaii is actually also a famous brand that also build quality. Uh, and yeah, so, but I'm of course happy I have it and uh, it's a good Steinway. Now you have some piano technicians who say that the Steinways and in general pianos of the year 70, 80 were better than today. Now I played on very good pianos, Steinway pianos that are new, B and C and Ds that were amazing. So I think the difference is bigger between different pianos than just between the years or between the brands actually. Yeah because I played on very bad Steinways and I played on very good Yamahas and opposite too, actually, I played on very good Steinways and I played on very bad Yamaha. So into a brand, you have different qualities, it can also depend on the maintenance of the piano. If the piano is badly maintained, well, the, the quality will drop. 
if it's mating very well, the quality will kind of stay and you can also renovate, regulate and do a lot of stuff to keep a piano in a very good shape, which I did with this one actually, because additionally to the price of 70,000, you also have to consider um, if you make a loan, you will pay some interest. So this will be like around 80,000. And then the maintenance I did on this piano, I did some regulation, I did some uh, other stuff and you can add easily three, four, five thousand to it. So at the end, actually, all what I was paying for my pianos will probably get close to 100,000. But again, people pay this for a house, I pay this for a piano. So is it worth it? Yeah, well, yeah, for me, uh, because it's my job and it's my priority in life, piano, it's, I think it's worth it. And actually even improving to an, a higher model and a better one would be worth it too. Uh, at some certain point, you have to make a choice. Do I want to save for money or do I want to spend the money in a piano? I will see. I'm actually quite happy with this one. And um, you can actually hear the sound of on many of my recordings, actually on all of my recordings are on this piano. Now the sound is not amazing because it's in a small room. The, the room is 16 square meter and um, of course the, the acoustic is limited on, in such a room. I mostly close the piano and the microphones are good, but um, yeah, you don't get an amazing sound, but you have an idea of the sound quality of what it is. And now if you would like to compare two pianos, um, again, like I said, it's very difficult and it's subjective because I had this experience also playing on two uh, model B in a concert hall in a small one so they were next to each other and I played on the first one then on the second one and I remember I preferred the second one and then they moved the second one on the place of the first one and then I didn't like it anymore just because the acoustic was actually not so good and this place it was better there so yeah it's difficult to evaluate the piano and the acoustic of the room is important uh, if you open it or close it of course the maintenance of the piano makes a big difference in the sound how it's voiced how it's uh, regulated how it's uh, tuned of course it's all tuned um, but yeah, you, you, you get a higher quality normally with a Steinway than with a, another brand. Now, if I had unlimited money, um, which would I buy? I would buy actually many different ones because they're just different. Um, I would buy a Steinway D for sure. I would buy a Fazoli, the big one, and I would buy a, a concert brand of Pechstein. And then I would buy some uh, probably older pianos of the Chopin time and Beethoven time. And uh, yeah, but I would need space and money for this. So. Steinway, the guarantee with Steinway is you have a piano that you have on most of stages, so you are very close to what you will have on the stage. If you do a lot of concert, this might be important. Um, if you don't, you actually are a bit more free to choose for other brands that are really good too. Uh, so it's all a bit a um, personal, personal decision. So I hope this video helped you and um, motivated you to save for a piano if that's your goal. Feel free to write comments and ask me questions if you have. I always uh, try to answer them and see you next video. Bye.